We are back after a long mid-seasons break. Thank you for viewing Nerd Nation's Walking Dead comic comparison. In these videos, we recap the episode and give some insight as to what was inspired by the comics, as well as what changes were made exclusively for the show. Now, without further ado, let's get right to it. Before we begin, let's get our warning and disclaimer out of the way. This video contains spoilers for this episode and possible future episodes of AMC's The Walking Dead. If you do not wish to have any surprises ruined, cover your eyes, ears, and pee hole, or favorite this video and watch later. Don't forget to subscribe to check out further videos. This week's episode picks up right where the mid-season's break left off. Some bikers have Abraham, Sasha, and Daryl at gunpoint, demanding their weapons and gear in the name of some man named Negan. Your property now belongs to Negan. In the comics, this event comes much later on after they already made contact with another community called Hilltop and learn of the saviors and their protection racket. The main difference though is in the comics, Rick is the one to be confronted and their interaction is much shorter until the bikers are caught off guard and taken out. However, if you compare the scene from the TV show, you can definitely see some similarities. In the comics, Rick leaves one alive to go back to Negan and tell him his protection racket is over, so it'll be interesting in the show to see exactly how Negan finds out about what Daryl has done since the whole group was blown up. This is also a crucial turning point for the next book, All Out War, as the killing of Negan's men is taken as a declaration of war against his group and the status quo. Next we pick up in Alexandria where walkers have flooded into the community and Rick has come up with a plan to escape. Using the same trick from back in Atlanta, they cover themselves in zombie guts to mask their smell and freely walk among the dead. This plays out almost exactly as it does in the comics except for a few tweaks for the show's continuity. In the comics, there is no Sam, with Jesse only having one son, Ron. But what happens to Ron in the comics is the same fate of Sam in the show. The show has a few side stories included, wrapping up some of the loose ends from the mid-season finale, such as Morgan, Carol, and the others. Glenn and Edith, and the whole thing with the wolf guy. Back to Rick, his plan is working until Sam starts to get scared, crying and drawing the attention of the walkers around him. It doesn't take long for Sam to become a human Scooby snack as walkers pile on him. Sam, I need you to come with me, Zach. I need you to come with me. I want to. I need you to be strong. Jessie tries to help but only puts herself on the menu too. This scene plays out almost identically in the comics with Jessie clutching onto Carl's hand begging Rick for help. I felt like the comic version had a bigger impact as you can not only see the fear but the look of betrayal in her eyes as Rick hacks her arm off, leaving her to become zombie chow. During the struggle, a gun falls to the ground and Ron picks it up, pointing it at Carl because, as we know, there's no better time for revenge than when surrounded by hundreds of flesh-eating humans, Ron ignores the demands of the group to drop the weapon. Michonne is like, oh hell no, and turns Ron into a human dick kebab. His gun still goes off though, shooting Carl in the eye, killing him instantly and ending The Walking Dead show after six long seasons. We're kidding, of course, and there's lots more to happen. In the comics, the mayor of Alexandria was the husband, Douglas Monroe, and he was the one that shoots Carl. His wife was the one to be accidentally killed by Peter. Douglas goes batshit crazy and walks out into the street to take on all the zombies by himself. Urging Rick and his group to get back inside, he is quickly swarmed by walkers, and his last shot goes stray and right at Carl. Like in the comics, Carl's rushed through the clinic to try to save him. In the comics though, Carl survives and lives on to sport a bandana over his eye. This later becomes a defining characteristic of him in sorts, as in future issues he struggles to overcome having a vagina on his face. Angered by the potential loss of his son, Rick goes berserk on the horde of zombies overrunning the town. The 
The final act of the episode was also taken from the comics, but seeing it performed by live actors accomplishes something that comic books just can't do. Seeing Rick take on the horde by himself, the entire town eventually joins in the fight. He rallies the rest of the survivors to take back their town from the undead in a long, zombie-killing, hack-and-slash montage. So what's to come? Well, at this point in the comic, we move into a book called A Larger World, where the group in Alexandria learned they are not alone and other settlements exist, one called Hilltop and another one called Kingdom. It's also from here that the next major villain in the series Horizon, already introduced by name, called Negan, who runs a group known as the Saviors that controls the communities by force. In my prediction for the show, which is always been shown to be wrong, the second half of season six will take us into these other communities and set up season to follow the book All Out War, in which, in the comics, Rick unites all these communities to fight back against Negan and his saviors. For now, I'll leave it off here. So what did you think of this week's episode? Leave your comments in the section below, and if you like these videos, don't forget to thumb up, share, and subscribe. Until next time, keep on walking.